and James Knightley. He's senior economist at ING Bank, joins us from its London offices. So, James, just hearing there that there was absolutely no change in the split on when it comes to voting. Uh, no other officials joining Adam Posen in his call for immediate bond purchases. What are the implications of this for monetary policy or indeed monetary easing going forward? Yeah, I mean, we, we had suspected that there might be one person join Adam Posen in voting for a uh, for further quantitative easing. But I think it's interesting that we've had this more dovish tone to the commentary within the minutes, coupled with the Bank of England's quarterly bulletin on Monday, which effectively stated that so the 200 billion of asset purchases was worth the equivalent of 150 to 300 basis points of rate cuts. So they clearly think it is an effective tool. And if, as you say, they do revise down their growth and in inflation numbers further in the November inflation report, there's a pretty good chance that they will pull the trigger and do more QE uh, then at November 10 and that will certainly keep studying on the back foot because it doesn't look as though the Fed's going to be doing further QE certainly in the near term. Well as you say the language marks something of a shift doesn't it because they're saying that it's preferable both preferable and probable that we will see more QE in the near term future so or in, in the future do you think that it will definitely happen in November? Um, it depends on whether the sovereign debt crisis in the Eurozone has taken another downward leg and therefore growth risks have taken another downward lurch. If we've got this sort of gradual, sort of not much happening at this stage, then I think because inflation is still high and it's likely to push higher over the next couple of months, they may wait until February. Um, mm. But I think it's probably a 50-50 call between uh, November and February right now. Because as you say, James, the Bank of England has already said, Mervyn King has said that he expects inflation to reach at least 5% this year. I mean, is that perhaps... Uh, overestimating the rate of inflation if we're expecting it to then fall below 2% come next year? Yeah, it's, it's tricky for the Bank of England because they're targeting inflation in two years' time. There's a huge range of uncertainties on that. Uh, but I think with global growth risks deteriorating, we've had the IMF downwardly revise their growth assumptions yesterday. That does suggest the Bank of England in all likelihood is going to have to revise down their growth assumptions. And if it's a fairly significant move and we see inflation expectations from the bank move, say, below towards 1.5% in two years' time, then I think that's certainly the catalyst for, for earlier action in November. I mean, right now, inflation is a problem, isn't it? Because effectively the rate of inflation is outpacing wage growth and that is putting uh, a great deal of pressure on households, on spending power. It is. So we need to see as much help for them as possible. And that's why I think the Bank of England will be moving in that direction. They've clearly indicated today that uh, the, the, the UK economy probably does need more stimulus. And as they outlined in the quarterly bulletin, it is a very effective tool in stimulating the economy. Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg has spoken about the government working to unblock 40 infrastructure projects. Is that the sort of thing we need to see to encourage growth? Do we need to see more spending on infrastructure, on roads, on bridges? Is that really going to boost growth at this point here in the UK? I, I don't think it's going to have that much impact quickly. Um, so that's where I think the Bank of England really comes in. But certainly if we do see more support for the economy, be it either fiscal or monetary, then that's got to be better news for growth in the medium term. So I, I think, you know, politicians and central bankers are looking at all the options to try and get the UK economy back on track. Thanks very much indeed. James Knightley, Senior Economist at ING Bank. Good to talk to you.